Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Kibekani. For those who are new here, I'm a final year medical student at Cambridge and I'm at Pitt House. So today I'll be talking about my journey to medical school. So everything from the first time I realized I wanted to do medicine and everything I did to prepare my application. So my decision to want to study medicine was influenced by quite a few things. So I grew up in Zimbabwe. Uh, I think I've talked about that a few times on this channel. And growing up, I enjoyed biology at school. I absolutely loved biology and especially the human aspects of biology, so human biology absolutely loved it but also growing up i saw a lot of infectious diseases so in zimbabwe they, because it's within the tropics there's a lot of infection and also the advent of diseases like hiv i just wanted to really understand what was going on with the viruses some bacterial infections so i really just was very intrigued and interested to find out more and sort of find out ways i could help so though I, I had this feeling that i wanted to help people but i didn't know what the best way to do that was so my family tells me that i started saying that I wanted to be a doctor from when I was really young but the earliest memories I've got of this is when I was around 10, 11 sort of thinking about all these infections and how best I'd be able to help other people so I started thinking about medicine then and the fact that I enjoyed biology at school really helped because then it just put me on the medicine path so with that in mind I decided to do science based um, O levels which are equivalent to GCSEs so I did 10 subjects um, and I had 8 A's and 2 B's at the end. Soon after my O levels, my family moved to the UK and, that, and I moved with them. Because I wanted to do medicine, I had to do science A levels. So I picked biology, chemistry, maths, physics. And it was quite a different experience. So to do medicine in Zimbabwe, you had to do well in school. You didn't really have to do a personal statement or didn't really need work experience. But when I got to Wembley High Technology College where I did my A levels, one of my uh, chemistry teachers was just asking the class like what they wanted to do and I told her I wanted to do medicine and she was like do you have uh, any work experience I was like no <laughs> and she was telling me like the application process and the different things that I had to do it was quite a stressful time because a lot of my peers wanted to do medicine they'd known for a while that they wanted to do medicine so they had already started uh, getting work experience in GPs and things like this that was a bit stressful and on top of that I had the stress of studying at a new school, uh, in a different country, different learning environments. I was lucky because science, doesn't matter where you study it, science is science, you know, chemistry is chemistry, physics is physics. So I wasn't, I wasn't behind in any way. However, I did have to work a bit harder to just be on the same level as everyone else. I had to start thinking about work experience quite early on. I had to work hard to find work experience. I was struggling to find work experience. I think I remember just pull, Googling uh, different hospitals in my area, finding contacts and just sending emails to people, just begging for work experience, really. I got a few replies, but nothing was really promising. My school worked with non-profit organizations, such as the Social Mobility Foundation. I think I've talked about them on this channel before. They will help students from disadvantaged backgrounds, help them find work experience and they also importantly they pay you with a mentor who's someone who's already in the field that you want to go in for me this was a doctor i think my mentor was in fy2 at the time he was fantastic he gave me advice about the application process the different things i had to do to just enhance my application and the social mobility foundation helped me find work experience at chelsea and westminster hospital that was the only hospital work experience i had the good thing about it was that they rotated us between surgery and medicine so even though it was only i think it was only two weeks we managed to see quite a lot in those two weeks and learn about sort of medicine as a career the challenges of medicine on top of that work experience i also managed to organize work experience at a gp practice i did this via a family friend and the importance of the gp work experience was that i got to see medicine from a primary care perspective something i didn't manage to do from the hospital work experience we've talked quite a bit about work experience on this channel so you can watch the other videos if you're interested in that so once i got my work experience sorted and i was certain that i want to do medicine the other side of work experience in, on top of giving you experience and things you can talk about in your personal statement it allows you to try out the profession if that makes sense so so for me i got to see all these doctors all these junior doctors and picture myself in their shoes and see if this is what i want to do in, like for the rest of my life basically and i think after the work experience i was certain so after that i started thinking about the universities i was going to apply to so this is where things got a bit interesting because i had done all levels i didn't have gcse's although they're equivalent some universities weren't particularly keen on that so i had to email universities ahead of time to say okay this is my situation i don't have gcse's i've got all levels i've done my a levels here and um, would you consider my application and actually sadly quite a few universities 
said no. Some universities asked me to do to redo maths, English, and science at GCSE level, even though my A levels I was doing I was already doing those subjects. So I just thought I wouldn't apply to those universities. So by the end, I had a list about ten universities who had said it's absolutely fine. We recognize all levels as, as equivalent to GCSEs. So you, you'd be okay applying with those, which was good. Bit of a relief at that time. So because some of the universities on my list wanted the UK cut, I started thinking about doing the UK cut. I think I left it quite late to prepare for it. I left about four or five weeks. So I started preparing then. I was using the Medify website, which is good because it gives you the material in a sort of on a computer, which is how you would do the exam. I also used the 600 UK cut book. That's what it was called back then. It's probably changed now. I had a score of 640, which is not great by any stretch. I was gutted by that score and I knew with that score any chance of King's University had gone out of the window. Yeah, after my UK card I was a bit down after that. I was really lucky because my family was there to support me after my UK card. You get your results on the same day. I was a bit down uh, but they picked me up and they just reminded me of the fact that sometimes things don't always go the way you plan but things do work out in the end. For my AS levels I planned to drop physics at the end. I found physics incredibly tough. I ended up spending a lot more time on physics than my other subjects. At the end of AS I did manage to get four A's and my highest score was in physics so after that I, I just decided to to keep all my four subjects to A2 level. I was also planning to apply to some BMAT universities, so I started preparing for the BMAT. I did that quite early because the UK card had given myself so little time, like a month I didn't think was enough. I was in a fortunate situation because I was studying physics, biology, chemistry and maths at A level. Those are some of the sciences that get examined in the BMAT. Um, I know quite a few of my friends weren't doing physics at the time, had to sort of revise their GCSE physics. I did brush up on my GCSE uh, sciences, but I was already doing science at A level, so it, it was okay. There's a writing component where you have to write an essay, or a short essay. So to prepare for that section, I wrote short essays, and I would just ask some of my teachers to read them and mark them and give me some advice. English teachers are perfect for this. You can approach them, ask them to mark your essays. That's the best way to do it, I think. And for my BMAT score, they don't give you a single number, so I can't quite remember. They give you like a breakdown of sections. I remember in one of the sections, I think the writing section I had a B, so I think that was all right. <laughs> so in parallel to all this, I was also thinking about my personal statement. My advice about personal statements is that just have a lot of drafts. Start off writing, it doesn't matter. I think mine to start with was about four pages long. It was really long, but have as much in there as possible. It's a lot better to work to try and cut it down than to try to fill things in when the deadline is approaching. Get a lot of people to read it. It doesn't matter if it's friends, family, your teachers, especially your teachers because they'll have great advice for you from different subjects, which is what I did. I had quite a lot of help from my teachers and I thank them a lot for that. <laughs> so in the end, I applied to Cambridge uh, with the BMAT because they'd said they'd accept my application. I applied to Liverpool. So Liverpool in my head was a bit strategic in that they didn't ask for the UK card or the BMAT. So I was, my, my thinking was my UK card didn't go really well. My BMAT, well, I wouldn't know my score uh, when I apply. So if it doesn't go well, then at least I've got this one university that doesn't use these aptitude tests and they'll just base my application on everything else. So that's why I applied to Liverpool. I also applied to Leicester and Leeds. I believe they both used the UK cut back then. I, I was just chancing it at that point, I think, because my score wasn't that high. And for me, for my situation, importantly, all these universities that said, it's absolutely fine for you to apply with your O levels. They would accept them. I also applied for biomedical sciences at St. George's University in London. The reason I did that was because at St. George's, they had a well-established route for people to transfer from biomedical sciences to medicine later on. So if medicine hadn't worked out the first time around, I was going to try and do that and do graduate entry medicine at St. George's University. So all in all, it was a lot of work, a lot of hard work over the summer. But at this point, my application was sent and you sort of breathe a sigh of relief. Even though you have the BMAT coming up in November, I sort of breathe a sigh of relief that everything was sent. However, when I first heard back from the universities, I first heard back from Leicester and it was a straight up rejection, no interview <laughs> uh, just before Christmas. I just say to myself, it's one university, you've still got three more, so it's fine. Don't stress about it, don't worry about it. And shortly after that, I heard from Cambridge that I was going to get an interview at Pete House. I made a direct application to Pete House. So I was glad about that and I started preparing for that. I think most schools will have mocks around that time. I just didn't work for my mocks at all. But my teachers understood that I was preparing for the interview. So I had two interviews at Peterhouse and they went okay and went back home. And then after Christmas, soon after Christmas, I had back from Leeds and it was a rejection again, no interview. But it was okay because I had already had an interview. So I wasn't too worried. In all this time, I had nothing from Liverpool. I even got my offer from Cambridge. I think it was in the January time before I had anything from Liverpool. And I emailed them 
after I had my offer from Cambridge, like, did you get my application? <laughs> but they replied that they had it and they were processing a lot of people. Soon after that, they invited me for interview. Uh, the interview went okay. The style of the interview at Liverpool was very different. Uh, it was sort of the traditional interview for medicine where you get asked questions like, why medicine? Why this university? That sort of thing. Whereas my Cambridge interviews were more science-based, academic. So at the end of the application process, I had two rejections from Leicester and Leeds, two offers, one from Cambridge, one from Liverpool. Uh, my offer from Cambridge was A-Star AA. I had also an offer for biomedical sciences at St. George's and the offer from Liverpool. I remember the grades for that one. It was probably triple A. And on my UCAS form, I put Cambridge as my firm and Liverpool as my insurance. After that, I just started working really hard to meet my offers. Because you hear these horror stories of people who get offers and then they miss their offers. I was so scared of that happening to me that I just worked myself into the ground. Um, but I think it all worked out fine. I got into Cambridge in the end. I was so happy. I was so glad. I remember when I got the offer letter from Cambridge. They tell you the date when all the letters will be sent. So I spent that day just stressing about it. I didn't leave the house. I was in my bed the whole day. <laughs> and the letter fi finally came. I think it was three in the afternoon or something. I remember this like it was last week and when the letter came through it was quite thick so in my head i was like okay i don't think that's a rejection because if they reject it they just send you like one sheet of paper it was quite thick fairly heavy so i was like okay at least at the very least i've got i've put put in the pool but i opened it and it was an offer there was celebration all over the house uh, it was amazing so remember guys it only takes one offer that's all it takes to get into medicine if you're watching this video you're probably thinking about going through this application process it is quite tough, but it's quite rewarding and it'll be worth it in the end. And I wish you all the best and thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one.